All right, I just wanted to make a really qu quick video because I found out how to do something in JavaScript and I'm pretty thrilled about it and I want to share it. Uh, so I've run into this situation a lot of times, especially when working in Vue. Um, I, I shouldn't say a lot of times. I've run into this recently where I've got a form that I want to submit and I've got this pattern where, you know, they click a button, they're going to submit it probably to create an item of some kind. Um, we pull in a post function from an API and we're just going to call that with some payload. And uh, the payload is going to be, you know, the, the elements of the form, the values from these refs. And we're going to put those in there. And if they leave one of them blank, you know, we've got this. So we've got some validation here. If they don't have the name, if they don't have the value, then we're going to return. And, you know, obviously, like this is not really production wise sufficient to evaluate these things because you know if you say not in javascript i think not zero as a string like could be falsy um actually i could be wrong about that um let's see if it was not zero as a string uh is false okay so that's good but um you know there are cases in which like this could be insufficient for validation or whatever but the point is that we're trying to make name and email be required we're trying to make favorite color be an optional uh input and they can leave it blank and it could be uh you know there could be nothing there uh or it could be an empty string or something like that so what i would like to be able to do is to post this to the api but have my payload leave that off uh if it's empty and only include it if it's present right so uh, the way that you would do this kind of obviously, like very clearly would just be if uh, favorite color dot value, like if we have some value, then we'll add it to the payload. Payload dot favorite color, favorite color dot value. Great. Um, I wanted a way to take this and throw it in line and do it in here, right? And I know how to do that. Actually, I've, I've discovered how to do that, and I use this a lot. Whenever I want to optionally throw something and say, if there is a case that is true, then I want to include this in there, and if it's not, then I want to leave it off. And I do this uh, actually all the time. I do uh, a rest operator with uh, parentheses, and then I do a ternary, and I say something like uh, favorite color dot value, and if that's truthy, then we will rest uh, in this favorite color, favorite color dot value object here, which will take that and because we're using this rest operator, it will uh, throw that in line and we will end up with something like that, right? It'll actually just go in line in there because we're using that rest operator. If it returns this, then we end up with resting this object and that's what we want. And if it's not true, then we rest an empty object. And if we do the empty object in there with this operator, then it ends up doing nothing. And that's exactly what we want. So I end up doing it like this. Uh, and I don't mind doing that, but I've written favorite color three times. And whenever I do something over and over again, I feel like there's a function that I can do to simplify that. And I, and I want to break that out. I want to just do something like, you know, optional on favorite color, right? Favorite color is optional rested in there. So how would I write this function? And that's what I've been dealing with, right? Uh, this is a ref. I can't call it ref. I'm actually just going to call it R to symbolize that it is a ref. Um, and let me get down so that this is in view here. How would you write this function? Well, you would want to return an object, you know, ultimately, if favorite color dot value, you'd want to return an object and it would be favorite color would be favorite color dot value, right? That's ultimately the object that we want. But of course, here we want to take R and replace it, right? If we just do this, then what are we going to end up with? An object where the property name is literally R. Uh, this would work. R dot value is going to work. R dot value is going to work. That's going to be fine. But this right here is the tricky thing, the name of the property. How do I get that from here? This is what I've been trying to figure out. So everything else... You know, this is this this is what we're trying to do. If there is a value, then we want to rest in. We want to get this object, and if not, we want to get the empty object. But that's the kicker right there. How do I actually take that name? I was literally going to the MDN docs, looking at like the reflection stuff 
uh, in JavaScript trying to figure out, is there a way that I can just do like r.name or can I do like reflect r dot get name or something like that you know like what can i do to get at the original name of that even though it's being passed in as a as a function um as an argument and uh and the way that i discovered to do it was not my idea but i think it's very clever if we wrap this right here as an object javascript does a really nice thing for us where when you're making an object uh if you just write it like that. If we write K in there like that, it actually is doing this and it creates a property name of K and it creates the value of the value of K. So it uh, takes that variable name K and turns it into a string that is in the object. And there are methods in JavaScript for getting out the uh, key of an object, right? So we can actually do something like object dot keys and get out the object right um so what we would do here is we would do like the name is the first element of key like the first key that we passed in favorite color and the name is going to be favorite color actually the more sophisticated javascripty way to do this would be to wrap that in there and destructure that like that uh and so we end up being able to do that. Now, we also need to take R, because uh, instead of, it can't be R.value now because favorite color is inside of an object. So we need to destructure the value of it too. So we can actually use object.entries and that's gonna give us an array of arrays and each element in the array, first element's gonna be that property name, second element's gonna be the value. So we can wrap this in another one and have value be here. So now name is favorite color as a string and value is the actual favorite color ref that we can call dot value on. So now we do value dot value is gonna return name and value dot value. And this is the uh, function right here. So this works. And I, I, I feel like that's pretty cool. That's, that's kind of an elegant solution in my opinion is the fact that I can throw this in here and what it's basically just gonna do is, hey, if there is a value in this ref, then we're gonna include it. And if there is no value, then don't include it. And right here we say if, and you know, that is just, hey, is it truthy? But if we wanna say like, is this equal to some value, you know, um, you know, if it, is it equal to true? Or if we wanna be more serious with this and, and be like, if it's null, or like if it's not null, then we're gonna include it. Uh, so that empty string still makes it in if they have an empty string, or we could leave it as falsy if we want empty string to be excluded too. But, you know, this makes it really easy to do that. And we don't end up having to have a ton of if statements written out here. So just wanted to share that.